Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a sci-fi electric dreams episode from 2018, titled Real Life. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Sarah is a police officer, she and her companion Mario chat in a diner over a plate of fries and a burger before getting into a self-flying car, Sarah is clearly distracted and closed off. Later at home, she is haunted by an event where a couple of her co-workers were gunned down in a blood frenzy. Her girlfriend Katie comes home and tells her to cut back on the drinks. She comforts Sarah, who replays the event over and over in her head. To help Sarah, Katie offers her a vacation in the form of a computer chip that would allow her to experience life in another place as another person. A person who will supposedly fulfill all of her innermost desires and fantasies. This is something Sarah needs right about now. Katie plugs her in and wishes her a good vacation. After Sarah boots up the device, she, or rather he, wakes up as George. He had hit his head and while wondering where he is, his companion Chris tells him to stay alert and be careful. They are ambushed and brought to the mob boss Colin, who obviously knows George. They strap him of his gun and hold him down on the table. Collins threatens to cut off his finger, that's when George manages to overpower the guy holding him and he and his companion finish off the rest. One of them manages to escape and George is not sure what's going on, so he follows Chris. They get in the car and he tries to start it with voice commands and some hand gestures, unsuccessfully, Chris is just confused and they switch places. Chris is concerned because George is exhibiting some pretty unusual behavior. In Sarah's reality, the world is much more advanced and they do not have a steering wheel. George starts remembering things from this world, such as his name and that Chris is his longtime friend. At home, his doctor friend Paula treats his wound and he has a flash of more memories. He is the CEO of Avacom. After Paula leaves, Chris comes back and tells him that Colin was the one who escaped earlier. In a flashback, he remembers that Colin is the one who killed his family. In Sarah's reality Colin is the one who gunned down a bunch of her officers. The night's mission at the warehouse with Chris was a vendetta against Colin. George is restless, so Chris suggests a vacation without leaving his home, a prototype VR, that George's company built. George thanks him and Chris leaves. He puts on the VR gear and wakes up as Sarah. She goes to the window and looks outside, this is her reality. Later, Sarah meets with Mario in a diner. She says that somehow the food doesn't taste right. She tells him about the vacation and how the longer she was there as George, the more familiar it became, like she was remembering her real life for the first time. They get a notification about Colin still being in the city. Sarah had suspected he never left town, but now it's confirmed. She wonders how it can be so easy and convenient that they know their next meeting place. Sarah and Mario enter a warehouse where Colin should be holding a meeting. She notes that it's the same place she was in when she was George. They spot Collins and some men conversing. Mario tries to call for backup but no signal, he walks away and Sarah moves closer to investigate. She is found out and after a chase she is knocked unconscious with some sort of immobilizer. She wakes up as George again. He is in a meeting with the Justice Department, who inquire about his whereabouts last night, the night he was with Chris at the warehouse. George has a flashback of his family being killed and throws up. At home, Paula checks on him. She thinks it's because of the concussion he suffered at the warehouse. He tells Paula that he can't remember his wife, only flashbacks of the video, and this troubles him deeply. He wonders why there are no pictures of her, he supposedly had put them away after her death, but Paula has a picture of Katie. He is suddenly surprised to hear that his wife's name is Katie, just like in Sarah's reality. Paula shows him the picture, she is the same Katie as in the other reality. He begins to remember their time together and mourns her death. At this moment George confesses to Paula that he has been using the VR and has memories of another life as a woman, the events are so similar it is disturbing. She says that it is probably deja vu and his brain is having trouble processing the simulated events. Paula explains that he's not a future lesbian super cop in a flying car, but that this is real life right here, right now. George doesn't agree with this, something is wrong. Eventually Paula manages to convince George to stop using VR and he promises not to. Just as Paula leaves, he gets his VR set ready and dives. Sarah wakes up in the hospital with Katie and Mario by her side. When she asks Mario what happened, he tells her they had one, and the criminals involved in the mass shooting are behind bars. She wonders how. At the warehouse, he managed to call for backup and they arrived and arrested everyone. She feels like this is all too perfect and simple. Later, Sarah and Katie give each other a massage to relieve stress. Katie asks Sarah about her vacation if she slept with anyone or if anything interesting happened. She was a man, her wife had been killed and she was devastated and was doing everything she could to find the killer. 
Sarah tells her that in George's world she is his dead wife Katie, which is kinda creepy. She begins to share more similarities with both worlds, like Collins and VR. Katie is annoyed because there is no such thing as both worlds, there is only one. Sarah says that for her there are two. When she is here she remembers everything, but as George everything is foggy and confusing. The problem is that her life as Sarah is too perfect, everything fits together too easily. She can't distinguish what is reality anymore. Katie tells her that maybe subconsciously Sarah thinks Katie is too perfect for her and doesn't deserve her, so Katie is dead in the virtual reality. She suggests going to the hospital in the morning and erasing all memories of the vacation, and Sarah reluctantly agrees. At night Sarah has trouble falling asleep, she thinks about her life as George and decides to go in again, she puts on the chip and dives in. George visits the diner he had previously visited as Sarah with Mario. The owner asks him if he wants the usual and that's when Chris enters the picture. They sit down at the same place and Chris tells him that Collins has fled the country, probably somewhere far away, quite unlike what happened in Sarah's reality. They are served burgers and fries, the same food as in the other reality. To George, everything feels so similar, the way the ice is scoped or even the song playing is the same. George says he remembers everything and knows what is going on and leaves. He comes home and sees Paula. He tells her that he knew she would be standing here the whole time. He suggests selling the company and donating all the assets to charity, saying he doesn't care about any of it. She calls him crazy. He comes to his nightstand and notices that the VR headgear is gone. He demands that she give it back, telling her that this world is his vacation and he just wants to get back to the real world. He can't believe he's arguing with a fantasy. She gives him back the headset and warns him that if he dives again it will damage his brain and he may never wake up. Paula says that everything sounds too perfect in Sarah's world. This is odd, because he had said the exact same thing. In Paula's last ditch attempt to stop George, she holds his hand and tells him to think of her. He suddenly remembers that Paula and he were having an affair. She explains that he developed this VR because his wife was killed and he wanted to live with her, even if it was not real. That's when the vacations began. One of his worlds is not real, which one is more likely, the one where his wife is brutally killed or the one where he is happy and everything is perfect. George is torn between the two, no longer sure which is real anymore. He mutters that he doesn't deserve Sarah's life and never did. He decides to accept his life as George as the reality and smashes the VR headset. Turns out Sarah was very real and she has just trapped herself in a fantasy, a guilt-ridden hell of her own making. The doctor says that her neural pathways have shut down and nothing can be done. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.